And what is belief? Well, for that, um, we start where we left off the other day, which is knowledge. We defined knowledge as belief last time. Uh, we couldn't get away from the word belief, no matter what, how we tried. And uh, people don't like that. People want to think. They want to believe that knowledge and belief are two different things. In their minds, they say, well, it's not the same. But see, in 3,000 years, no one has been able to separate knowledge from belief or belief from knowledge. And so we have, we have to go with the definition. We have to start a definition. You don't like the fact that I equate knowledge with belief. You have a single recourse. And that is to define the word knowledge in which you do not use the word belief. Or that you do not use any subjectivity whatsoever because that takes you into belief. That's the issue. So what happened? Well, uh, we have a winner for the, the idiot competition this uh, time around. And it starts like this. Last time we held that knowledge... Um, well, that philosophy is the love of wisdom. That's how the Greeks defined it, essentially. That's what the word philosophy means or how it was translated. Love of wisdom. Okay. The Greeks, uh, they couldn't define knowledge. You know, they, they were unsuccessful in the end, in uh, specifically Plato, right? He was unsuccess unsuccessful in saying, um, you know, knowledge is anything other than but belief. Okay? He, he, he couldn't get out of that. Um, and so, you know, uh, that's where we are today because we haven't progressed uh, an inch since the days of Plato. No one has been able to define the word knowledge in a way that uh, we can use it scientifically first, okay? um, in a way that we elude the word belief, in, the word, in a way that we can elude um, subjectivity. Okay, that's the issue. Okay, so the Greeks equated knowledge with belief, and to this day, no definite, we have no definition of knowledge, and so we stay with what Plato started and ended with, uh, and that's that knowledge is belief. You don't like it? Well, you have one recourse, and <laughs> that is to define the word knowledge without using any subjectivity whatsoever. You can't introduce an observer or anything like that, because as soon as you introduce that, you get into opinions, and our opinions are beliefs, and beliefs are religion. They have nothing to do with science. Now, we defined it here we define knowledge in a way that um, that it is usable as a word we don't have any use for the word knowledge in science but we defined what all these people have been saying for the last 3,000 years and that is how do you prove your knowledge to someone else well you prove it by running an experiment and you have to predict the outcome of that experiment without error and that's what's impossible to do 100% of the time. So there is no such thing as knowledge. What is knowledge according to us? It's the ability to predict the outcome of an experiment without error. That's the definition of knowledge. Of course, people don't like that definition. They say, well, that's not what we always thought about knowledge. People think that knowledge has something to do with reading a book and uh, learning that, you know, Napoleon went to Waterloo in 1815. And so they say, I know that Napoleon went to Waterloo in 1815. Now, you don't know it because you can't prove it and you cannot predict it. It's not something of the future, something of the past. And uh, all you can do is regurgitate what you read. You have no knowledge whatsoever, no firsthand knowledge of what happened in, in history. So you can't say you know this, but that's how we use the word regularly. We, we go in front of the three panel um, judges uh, at the university and we say, I know that Napoleon went to Waterloo. How do you know that? Well, because I read it in a book written by one of you. <laughs> Okay, so you cannot know that Napoleon went to Waterloo. You can only know the future. The word know only belongs to the future. The ability to predict the outcome of an experiment without error. And of course, there's no such thing as knowledge because as soon as you make a prediction you, uh, that something's going to happen, that certain result is going to take place in an experiment, there comes the asteroid, destroys the Earth, and your prediction does not come true because you did not know that there was an asteroid coming to destroy the Earth. So that's the issue here, okay? Okay, so uh, here we have a um, fellow says, people had knowledge before the ancient Greeks. <laughs> What's that got to do with anything, okay? Uh, he thinks that we're saying here that, uh, we, that the Greeks invented the word knowledge and uh, that their definition doesn't count that there was knowledge before the Greeks. And yeah, <laughs> I think there was knowledge. Uh, I mean, we're going to talk about knowledge in terms of, you know, uh, what the common notion of knowledge is, that it's something that you know, meaning you believe it strongly. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, there was knowledge before the Greeks. What does this say about anything? So, yeah, I think this uh, fellow won the idiot competition this week uh, with flying colors, okay? Uh, <laughs> what can I say? 
Okay, let's move on to uh, explaining a little bit about knowledge again. Let's make sure we understand that well. Okay, here's uh, good old Plato, and he said, knowledge, he defined it essentially as it's been translated from his book, okay, the Theotetus. Uh, he said, knowledge is justified true belief. That was his uh final comment on the word knowledge and it's Socrates that's really he's speaking for Socrates okay and so knowledge uh, is justified true belief but when you look that it up is justified justified by whom by you and so justified is just another opinion but it's belief what is true well what is true to you is a lie is false to your neighbor or a lie to your neighbor okay so that's also a belief that's a personal belief it's an opinion and so knowledge ends up being belief 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 that's it. <laughs> That's as far as you get with that. Uh, what is knowledge? According to, to Plato, it's just a strongly held belief. When you have a belief, you just have a belief. But when you have a knowledge, you have a strongly based belief. That means you believe in it very, very strongly, and no one's going to take you out of that because you know it. Okay, That's what's happening here. So people think that knowledge is uh, something that we know, like, oh, uh, you know, I press the button and the light turns on. They think that's knowledge. They say, yeah, we know it's going to turn on. It turns out that, you know, the electric circuit is failing. You press the button and nothing turns on. Well, you did not know that the electric circuit was failing in your house. And so your prediction does not come true. Okay, and, and we can go with a million scenarios similar to that one. Okay, so no, uh, knowledge is just a strongly held belief. You know for sure that your neighbor has been doing this and this and that. And it turns out that maybe you find out later on that your knowledge was just a belief. That he wasn't, in fact, doing anything that you thought he was doing. And so on down the line. So there's no such thing as knowledge. Okay, again, knowledge, the only way you show it to someone else is by running an experiment. And proving your knowledge by predicting exactly the outcome of that experiment, the results of that experiment, and we can't even do that. Not even God can do that because uh, that means he would have to already have been in the future and know exactly what's going to happen because he's watched the movie. But by doing so, he turns you into a cartoon character that has no free will. It means that uh, there's a script and you have no way of avoiding the script because God already knows everything that's going to happen. The, the block universe uh, that relativity has that everything has already happened and all that you are doing is walking in footsteps that is in a script that you cannot avoid. You're just Bugs Bunny, you know, doing whatever the author, uh, the uh, person who drew or, or wrote the script, uh, Bugs Bunny cannot uh, act outside the script. And that's what you are if the future has already happened. And if the future has not already happened, we don't know the future. We cannot predict the future 100% certain, you know, and so there is no such thing as knowledge. But that would be the definition of knowledge. Okay, a fellow makes a comment. He says, uh, knowledge, gnosis, has been confused with this. Uh-huh, he says that this uh, word, gnosis, okay, is... Uh, confused many times with knowledge. Now, uh, a lot of people don't understand exactly what gnosis is, okay? And so if you look it up, it's a feminine Greek noun which means knowledge or awareness. It is often used for personal knowledge compared with intellectual knowledge, okay? Now, in Spanish, we have um, two words, conocer and saber. Uh, saber means to know when you know something, but conocer is a word that doesn't exist in, the United, in, in English, okay? Uh, we don't, there, there is no word for conocer. And uh, it's more like acquaintance with, okay, that you're acquainted with someone, for example. So, you, so in English you say, um, I know Joe, okay? And we don't use the word uh, saber for that. We use the word conocer. You have the same thing in Russian. You have the same thing in German, okay? Um, and there is no such uh, word in English. In English they use no for everything, okay? So that's essentially the... Uh, what this fellow was pointing to, that gnosis is not the same thing as knowledge. Gnosis is more like, you see there, canon in uh, German and conocer in Spanish and so on. Okay, uh, but there is no such word in English. Uh, just for your information there, okay. And uh, so, what is belief then? Because we said, if knowledge is belief, if Plato held that knowledge is justified true belief, people don't like to hear that, but then what is belief and how does it differ from knowledge, if any at all? Well, one thing you'll notice if you look up the word belief, okay, whether you look it up in the dictionary and in an encyclopedia or whatever, you'll find one thing, and that's that they never use the word knowledge to define belief. But when they do it in reverse, when they define the word knowledge, they do define it as belief. You'll see the word belief in the explanation, in the justification. You'll see the word belief somewhere in there. And so there is a, a problem 
that on the one hand, you know, knowledge is equal to belief. They have the word belief in the definition of knowledge somewhere in there or in the explanation. But when it's in reverse, when you look at belief, they talk nothing at all about knowledge. Okay, and that's a problem because you're saying, hold it, knowledge is belief, but belief is not knowledge. In fact, when you look at a synonym, <laughs> when you look at a synonym of knowledge, you'll find, you won't find uh, the word belief in there, but you'll find the word unbelief. So they do use the word uh, unbelief as an antonym, but you will not find a synonym uh, in, of knowledge as being belief. Okay, so we have the, this inconsistency as well. Keep that in mind if you look the, up these words. Okay, so where do we go? Well, let's go to one place that analyzes the word knowledge quite well, and that's the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, which, as I said before, never defined the word philosophy, and therefore we have no definition of the word philosophy. You know, love of wisdom. Okay, so here it is. This is what the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy uh, says about knowledge, uh, about um, belief. It says, contemporary Anglophone philosophers of mine generally use the term belief to refer to the attitude we have roughly whenever we have something to be the case or regard as true. Uh, to believe something in this sense needn't involve actively reflecting on it. Nor does the term belief in standard philosophical usage imply any uncertainty or any extended reflection about the matter in question. In other words, when we say belief, it's not like we're pondering uh, in every case, right, uh, anything deeply. You can say you believe in God, for example, the existence of God, and maybe that person pondered it deeply and said, well, I believe God exists, you know, he might say that. But it, uh, when you say, you know, I believe that I'm going uh, this uh, weekend on vacation, you know, you may not be really reflecting on it. You may not have an uncertainty about it. You have not reflected on it, you know, in any deep matter, in, in any deep way. Okay, so it says, uh, many of the things we believe in the relevant sense are quite mundane. That we have heads, that is the 21st century, that a coffee mug is on the desk. Forming beliefs is thus one of the most basic and important features of the mind. Yeah. I think we all have beliefs, okay, of uh, different kinds. And it can continue here to say, the mind-body problem, for example, so central to philosophy of mind, is in part the question of whether and how a purely physical organism can have beliefs. Much of the epistemology revolves around questions about when and how our beliefs are justified or qualify as knowledge. Okay, the first uh, notion that uh, belief uh, is related to knowledge Okay, and that's because knowledge is defined as belief, but not because belief is defined as knowledge. Okay, and that's where people more or less draw the line. People say, well, belief is not really knowledge, isn't it? I mean, and, and a lot of people go into technology and they say, well, we know how to build something. And that was the first uh, notion that uh, Plato attacked, uh, Socrates, you know, Theotetus. Uh, uh, he, he attacked that, that a craftsman who knows how to build something that does not qualify as knowledge. So anyone using technology and saying, well, we know how to build things and we know that a computer works and all that stuff, that's not knowledge. Okay, that can easily be torn down. For this, you've got to read the Theotetus and find out what uh, Socrates' first argument is against uh, this notion of technology, you know, craftsmanship being equated to knowledge. Okay? So uh, we're not going to get into that, but just uh, look it up. Look up um, the Theotetus, and you'll find what Socrates' argument is there. What does the Catholic Encyclopedia of Philosophy say? Remember that Catholic, uh, they deal with belief every day. What do they say belief is? I mean, they talk about the belief in God, right? That's what they uh, vouch for. Okay, so here it is. It says, Catholic Encyclopedia, what is belief? The state of mind by which is a uh, sense to propositions, not by reason of their intrinsic evidence, but because of authority. Uh, is that where we draw the line between knowledge and belief, uh, authority, the fact that you, in the case of belief, you accept things through authority? Well, you know, all this knowledge that mathematical physics has, um, you know, uh, here we are several generations later after Einstein and Niels Bohr, relativity and quantum mechanics, right? And how do all these people learn, if not through authority, uh, enforced through the universities? You know, you, you, you go take the test, you better, uh, if you want to pass it, you had better parrot the par party line. And if you want to graduate and you want to get a PhD, well, hopefully, uh, you know, you don't go against the grain. You don't go against the uh, establishment. Okay, so, yeah, uh, people swallow everything through authority. And what do they say there that that's uh, belief? So, yeah, a lot of the so-called knowledge that we have today, especially in, mathematic, in physics, in mathematical physics, has to do with authority. And so, yeah, again, knowledge is 
uh, belief if uh, belief is swallowed through authority. And it says the objects of belief also are of a nature similar to those of knowledge. Okay, again, belief, they relate it to knowledge. Why? Because there's this issue of knowledge being justified through belief. Opinion and doubt. No criterion of division can be found in them. Okay, they have not figured out what knowledge is really other than belief, and so they can't figure out how to define knowledge without referring to belief. And that applies to the Catholic Encyclopedia. But remember something about that. You know, they have a stake in equating knowledge with belief because they say, hey, I believe, but by that I mean that I know that God exists. You see where that's coming from? So they love the fact that uh, knowledge is equated with belief that nobody has done anything better than what Plato did in the last, you know, 3,000 years ago. Okay, um, so here it is. Uh, Catholic Encyclopedia continues, says, knowledge cannot, strictly speaking, be defined. That's how they start their argument. That's great. Love it. That means that they don't know what knowledge is because they can't define it. No one can out there. So before you attack my notion that knowledge is equal to belief, Begin with your definition. I need a perfect definition that does not include the word belief or opinion or, you know, uh, anything related to religion, to subjectivity. Okay? The consciousness of an object supposes a judgment. Truth and certitude are conditions of knowledge. Okay? So these are the three things that they say are involved with knowledge. And if you go right there, consciousness, uh, judgment, truth and certitude, what are you talking about? You're talking about belief, opinion. Okay? Subjectivity. A man may mis mistake error for truth and give his unreserved assent to a false statement. Okay? So if you have knowledge, uh, maybe your knowledge is in error. That's what they're saying there. And so your knowledge may be false, meaning it was uh, your opinion all along. It was uh, your belief. Okay? He may then be under the irresistible illusion that he knows and subjectively the process is the same as that of knowledge. Okay? But as an essential condition is lacking, uh, namely conformity of thought with reality, okay, so that there, uh, so that there we have only the appearance of knowledge. We have what the semblance of knowledge. We think we know, but it turns out that we be believed all along. Okay? And again, uh, like I like to say, is Mother Nature knows for sure if there was a guy named Napoleon and whether he fought at Waterloo in 1815. She knows for a fact. God knows. Uh, the devil knows. All these people, the you know, Father Universe, they all know. Because they have it in their filing cabinet, what exactly happened? Okay, they they know exactly what happened at different points in time. We don't know. We can only we have no access to the filing cabinet. All we have is what our forefathers told us through books and you know maybe by word of mouth. So we don't know for sure that Napoleon existed and that he went to Waterloo. We don't know. We just believe it because our forefathers passed that information through to us through books primarily. The people who know are, you know, these gods, uh, Mother Nature and Father Universe, they know. They, but we don't have access to their filing cabinet. So we, they have the facts. We only have statements of the facts of what we think is, is true, okay, of what we think is a fact. But we don't have the exact fact because your fact could be different than my fact. Okay, we, ha we might have different facts, different um, starting point. We make different assumptions, okay. And so we don't, we don't really have knowledge. All we have is belief. You have your belief, you, I have my belief, and we introduce them in science as assumptions. Okay, so you say, let us assume. So we don't say, I know God exists, or I believe that God exists, or don't, doesn't exist, or I don't know that God exists. We don't say anything like that. We say, let us assume that God exists. That's the scientific way of presenting God uh, in a scientific context. And people say, God in a scientific context? Yeah, exactly. Just like you hear it. You can bring any assumption into science. Okay, Any assumption is fine. Now, people might question your assumption, but there's nothing wrong with saying, let us assume that God exists, because you're going to explain what's going through your head, and I want to understand what's, what you have going through your mind to understand your version of how the universe came to be or why the universe works this way, etc. Okay? So I need to understand your version of, of how uh, the universe works or how it came to be. Okay? And for that, you have to begin somewhere and you say, let us assume God exists. You can't say, I know that God exists and I believe that God exists. No, we don't care about what you believe or know. We care about your assumptions because that's what we're going to criticize uh, if that's what you introduce into your dissertation. Okay, and uh, here's the Wikipedia and uh, the dictionary. Okay, here's the dictionary.com. Belief is an opinion or a conviction. It's something you are convinced of. That's all it is which means knowledge. So far we're talking about knowledge because you're convinced of what you know. 
until someone shows you that you were wrong. It turns out your wife or your husband did not sleep with your next door neighbor as you knew. Turns out you believed it all along very strongly and you call that knowledge. Okay, Confidence in the truth or existence of something. Do you know uh, for a fact uh, the existence of mediators between atoms? Do you know this? this these invisible, intangible particles, waves, ropes that are between atoms? Can we see them? Can we prove them? Can we um, make them visible and tangible? So do you know that light is mediated by particles? Do you know that light is mediated by waves? Do you know that light is mediated by ropes, electromagnetic ropes, as we hold in this site? No, we don't know that. We make an assumption. We say, let us assume light is mediated by uh, particles. No problem there. And then you explain your theory based on that assumption. That's how it works in science. Okay? And confidence, faith, trust, that's what uh, belief is. It's just confidence. You have certain certitude in what you're saying. You, you believe it strongly. That's all it is. You know, and so you say, well, I don't just believe it. I know it. What did you say? You just say you believe it more strongly than just belief. And you say, well, I have a justification for it. Well, justification also is a belief. Who justified it? You. <laughs> you justified your, your knowledge, your belief. Okay, so to say justification and truth, you haven't said anything. All you said is that you continue to, you believe and believe. That's all you introduced so far. A religious tenet or tenets, religious creed or faith. Yeah, people identify belief with uh, faith, with religion. And we're going to include knowledge also under religion because knowledge is belief. And if knowledge is belief and belief belongs to religion, we're done. Knowledge is a word that belongs exclusively to religion and has no place whatsoever in science. Even though science is defined or originated, the etymology of the word originating in the notion of no, of knowledge. That was the error that our forefathers made. That's why we have to clean our nose holes, you know, with our, what our forefathers came up with because they screwed it up from the start. And they said science, uh, you know, from Syria, which uh, in Latin means knowledge or to know. That was a false step. We, had a, we started out on the wrong foot, okay? Science has nothing at all to do with knowledge. Its religion has to do with knowledge because knowledge is belief. Science has to do with theories, with explanations and understanding. That's why in this site we say that science is rational explanations, not knowledge, okay? It's got nothing to do with knowing. Okay, and then uh, Wikipedia says belief is an attitude. An attitude, okay? That something is the case, okay? Again, uh, an attitude, you have this sense that it is true to you, okay? Or that some proposition about the universe is true. True? What is true? True is what your, is your opinion. For me, I have a different truth, and your truth is false to me, okay? And I can play devil's advocate, extreme devil's advocate, and show you that even pi, you know, uh, circumference divided by uh, diameter is untrue, is false. And you say, no, but it's true, let me show you. And I keep saying, no, 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 and no. It's not true, it's false. And what are you going to do? I keep saying it's false. Okay, so this is the issue. I can continue saying that it's false, 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 all along, and you haven't proven it to me, and so what have we learned? Okay, it's false. Okay, philosophers use the term belief to refer to attitudes about the world, which can be either true or false. If they can be false, then... Uh, uh, you know, um, again, we're talking about belief. Uh, if it can be false, then uh, so can knowledge. Knowledge can be false. And so, there, again, we have not distinguished between knowledge and belief. Okay, um, here's a couple of uh, examples that people gave me, okay? Uh, because they want to defend the notion that knowledge is something other than belief. Fellow so says, famous statement from Feynman, Richard Feynman, right? Spelled it wrong. Uh, it is important to realize that in physics today, we have no knowledge of what energy is. These are exact textual works, uh, words from Mr. Feynman, okay? And he says, replace knowledge with the synonym believe indicated by Bill. Okay, let's do that. It is important to realize that in physics today, we have no belief, again, spelled it wrong, of what energy is. He says, do you think they have the same meaning? Well, my answer is yes, they have the same meaning. Until you define the word knowledge, we won't know why you think they're different. You need to define the word knowledge. You don't put an example and say, do you think they're the same? Do you think they're different? No, no, define knowledge and we'll know, right, uh, from your definition, <laughs> whether, you know, objectively, whether uh, uh, we can replace the word knowledge with the word belief in Feynman's statement. 
So all you have to do is very simple. Just define the word knowledge and we'll know what you are talking about. We'll have a definition. We'll have a, we can objectively determine okay, whether we can replace uh, knowledge with belief. And he continues, he says, what are words for uh, uh, if not to express a generic notion, which is specified and determined in the context of a sentence? Changing the meaning of words only produces confusion and disorientation, distraction, and bewilderment. Uh, I'm not the one who's changing the definition. You are. You're trying to tell me that knowledge is not belief when knowledge is defined everywhere since the days of Plato as belief. So you are the one who are ch trying to change the definition, but for that you have only one recourse, and that is to define the word knowledge before you open your mouth. Okay, so put a definition there, and then you can make all your case. Then you can do whatever you want after that. You can justify, explain, you know, do whatever you want, do your dissertation. Until you define the word knowledge, we have no idea what's going through your tiny brain. Okay, so uh, yeah, don't tell me that uh, I'm redefining. I'm doing exactly the opposite. I'm not redefining the word knowledge. I'm telling you what it's been defined as for the last 3,000 years and what it is defined as today, and that is as belief. Knowledge is belief. I did not invent that. That is the definition today. Anywhere you look at it, okay? And so until you define the word knowledge, other than what we have out there in the encyclopedias, in the dictionaries, we have no idea what you are talking about, okay? So you are, uh, the, the, the ball is in your court. You're, you have the task of defining the word knowledge. Another fellow says the following. He says, the existence of a God is both unknown and unknowable and provides a logical reason to, be, uh, to being agnostic concerning religious beliefs. Um, well, we have this, this is my reply to that. Okay? All beliefs are religious. Okay, so there is no such thing as a religious belief. All beliefs are religious and knowledge you know, the unknown and the unknowable falls within religion. Okay, that's the first thing we, we need to absolutely make clear. Why? Because knowledge is defined as belief. And there you have it. Religion is equal to belief and opinion. What is agnosticism? Well, it's got, the, uh, you know, the agnosticism deals exist, uh, exclusively with knowledge or belief. The knowledge uh, of whether God exists or not, the belief of whether God exists or not. That's what agnosticism is. It's a doubt about the knowledge of the existence of God. So agnosticism deals with the words knowledge and belief, and therefore it's religion as well, just like atheism and theism or deism. Okay? Existence has nothing to do with unknown or unknowable or with knowledge or with to know. Existence, as we define it here, is physical presence. You have to have an object that has to have location. If an object has location, it exists pursuant to the definition of exist. Okay? And uh, to talk about the knowledge or the belief in existence is what is irrational. That's why atheism, theism, and agnosticism, all three are irrational postures. They're, they're irrational positions because they're talking about the belief in the existence, and it turns out that existence has, makes no provision for belief or for knowledge. Okay? Do you believe that the chair, that chair you're sitting on exists? Well, hopefully you believe in it, because if you don't believe in it, what, you fall on your butt to the floor? So does belief or knowledge have anything to do with the existence of the chair? That's the issue. And the issue is, no, you can't say you believe or know that the chair is there. What do you mean you know that the chair is there? What does that mean? Does it mean that you believe, that you, are, you strongly believe that the chair is there? Is that all you're saying? That you believe and you say no no i know it's there okay define knowledge define what you mean by no when we when you define it then we can use the word consistently in science okay then we can say yeah now we can say that we know that the chair exists okay but until you define knowledge to know we have no idea what you said all you said you believe that the chair is there that's the first issue and then the second issue is that the word existence has nothing to do with that anyways you can't say you believe you know that the chair is there. The chair is there by definition because existence means object that has location. Is the chair an object? Yes. Does it have location? Does it have distance with respect to all matter in the universe, to, with respect to every atom in the universe? The answer is yes, then it exists by definition. Not because you believe or because you know. Okay, so it's this notion of introducing knowledge and belief into the word existence that is irrational. And that's where atheism, theism, and agnosticism fail. That's where they are irrational. Okay, and um, here we have uh, another fellow. He says, any scientific proof of your ropes yet, Bill? <laughs> 
uh, these fellows, you know, these uh, electric universers and flat earthers, they're all the same. They think everything has to be proven and proven through an experiment. They have this notion that we've had for the last 400 years since the 17th century so-called scientific revolution in which measurement experiments uh, were introduced in addition to more sophisticated math equations. They think it's a question of doing a measurement, getting an equation, and um, running another experiment, taking more measurements, more equations. That, they think that's what science is all about. We've been doing that for 400 years. We have great equations. In fact, we've developed mathematics to ir uh, irrational levels, to ridiculous levels, surrealistic levels. And we have only irrational um, explanations for physical mechanisms. Okay, so this is the problem. So these people are looking for some proof. They want me to make them believe in the rope. We don't do that in science. We don't twist your arm until you believe. Okay, they, so they want a scientific, I like it, they say scientific proof. <laughs> so uh, here's the, uh, 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 there's another fellow, I'm going to get into that in a second. But there's no such thing as scientific proof. Those are, that's an oxymoron. Okay, proof belongs exclusively to religion. Whenever you mention the word proof, evidence, you're talking about religion. Because we are talking about convincing someone, persuading them to change their mind. Okay? That's the, the purpose of evidence. What does a prosecutor introduce at trial? He introduces evidence. What for? Is it to prove to the jury, meaning to convince them to sway the jury in his favor? Yeah, of course. That's the purpose of evidence is to persuade. It's not to prove knowledge, to, to certify knowledge. Because when you do that, all you did was, again, certify belief. You're saying, I believe that that's what happened. Turns out the defense attorney has a different version of what happened, and he's got a different set of assumptions, a different set of knowledgeable, what he knows is different, so he makes a different set of assumptions. And he's going to try to sway the jury, convince the jury you know, in his favor okay, of what happened. And so what have we learned? Again, uh, uh, science is not a trial like in law. That's different. Okay? You do not uh, carry out a trial like we do in the legal profession. Okay, whenever they say they've proven, they presented evidence, they proved, they sent the person to, you know, life in prison or the electric chair, it turns out they find out later on that he was innocent, so that proof only proved that the people who knew, the jurors and the prosecutors, they were wrong. They did not know, they believed, it turns out DNA showed that this guy was innocent. So what did we know? Okay, what did we prove at trial? So science doesn't work like a trial, okay? Science, we do it objectively, that's the only way to have uniformity across the planet. And the way we do that is, again, we explain so that you understand, not so that you believe. So we don't run any experiments. And, and anyways, what experiment are you going to run with something that is invisible and intangible? Okay? Uh, here, here we have my famous test, okay? Everybody knows it by heart by now, that's been following. We let go of the pen, okay? And it falls to the floor. Gravity, we call it. Something called gravity. Apparently, we, this whole process, we call it gravity. Something is pulling or pushing the pen to the floor. Do you see or touch anything above or below the pen other than air? Has anything come in contact with the pen? Well, hopefully something came in contact with the pen because otherwise you're going to explain this phenomenon with black magic. You're saying there's nothing that came in contact with a pen, but the pen always falls down. It doesn't fall upwards to, to the sky, to the ceiling. So what have we proven with, you know, th this scientific proof that this fellow is requesting? What does he expect to find? Something that he can see or touch? He wants to go to the lab and have some proof, evidence, so that he's convinced, so that he believes that uh, the ropes are there, that the particles are there, that the waves, you know, electromagnetic waves, vectors, are there. Of course, so that's what all these electric universers and uh, flat earthers don't understand. You cannot prove, you cannot have evidence, you cannot go to the lab and see and touch that which is invisible and intangible. The mediators that Mother Nature uses to do her daily work. And if you say that there are no mediators, you are doing everything with black magic, known as action at a distance. You're doing things by remote control and saying what, that angels, spirits uh, do the mediation? How does that thing over there know that, that it's supposed to fall to the floor? How did it learn that? Hopefully something is in contact with that thing for it to fall always to the earth. 
Gravity is mediated by physical entities that we cannot see or touch. There is no experiment that you can run to prove to, you know, uh, to this file that um, there are mediators. Okay? This, the only way to uh, do this is to visualize. You have to visualize how Mother Nature could be doing this magic trick that you cannot see or touch, the mediators that we cannot see or touch. Okay? Along the same line, the next fellow also says something similar. He says the following. Uh, here we go. Have you got any actual practical demonstrations of water miraculously curving and clinging to the outside of spinning, wobbling, gyrating sphere flying through infinite space? Maybe you should read Ayn Rand. Okay, uh, well, I don't know if good old Ayn Rand would agree with him, first of all, okay. Uh, I don't think she would, she would be in line with him, probably more in line with me. But that's aside from that. Uh, first of all, you know, the flat earthers, they have curved water uh, in, in their world because they always draw a circle. They say it's flat, but it's, most of them say it's a circle. Some say it's infinite, but okay, whatever. Uh, you've got different flat earthers out there. But most of them say that it's a circle, meaning that water is curved anyways. Why is it curved? If there's no container on the outside and so they put this ice cap around they say what's the ice cap you know that's the container of the water on the planet well why is the ice cap curved what curve I mean what is ice if not water it froze how did it get curved before it froze okay so yeah water is curved even in the flat earth world but these people have never figured that out okay but anyways you know again um, I showed them that uh, you know, you don't prove these things. Uh, you cannot go in there and say, I'm going to prove that water is curved. I showed that the other day that um, all atoms, you know, uh, if, if you look at that white stuff there and you consider that uh, blue circle as a uh, sphere instead of a circle, okay, if that's a sphere and the white stuff there is um, air, why doesn't the air leave, you know, the earth? What, what keeps it uh, tied to the earth? And I'm saying the only way you can explain it is if every atom that constitutes the molecules of air are bound, physically bound through, in this case, electromagnetic ropes, to every atom uh, that constitutes the, uh, the global Earth, the globular uh, Earth. That's the only way you can explain gravity, weight, you know, mass, all these things. The only way you can deal with that is if every atom is physically interconnected to all other atoms. And the issue there is that the establishment always use discrete particles and that's why you cannot explain it with particles because then there you could argue that, you know, unless you have a container, all these things fly apart. But with uh, my uh, assumption, which is the electromagnetic ropes, you can't do that. So this is a different site that says that all the atoms are physically interconnected. If all atoms are physically interconnected, now you cannot say that you need a container. Okay? No container is necessary in space. All you need is that all atoms are physically interconnected. Once you understand that, you have to attack a new theory, a new a, a set of assumptions, which is interconnectivity. So don't treat this site like you would attack the establishment. We're not quantum mechanics. We don't. We clean our noses with relativity and string theory here. Okay? This is a different site. We're saying all atoms are physically interconnected. If they're physically interconnected, you can understand why the atoms don't fly out into outer space. You do not need a container.